Aloha! You are watching F5 On Demand. And welcome to the F5 Technology Demonstration Series, or as we like to call it internally, the Tech Demos. And this is where we show some of the cool features in Big IP from an insider point of view. And so today we have Joel Dusick, an enterprise network engineer with F5. Thanks for joining us, Joel. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. And I also understand you're a NPI here in F5. What does that mean? That's correct. That stands for a New Product Production Engineer. And I work with the new products being released, both FirePass and APM, and I'm also involved with the Edge Gateway. So what are you going to show us today, Joel? Well, today I'm going to show, though native APM doesn't have an LDAP-S capability, that it can be easily implemented using LTM technology to provide that, that capability. And so to be clear, this is the uh, Access Policy Manager, the module that's available now for the Big IP Local Traffic Manager, right? So APM does have an LDAP capability native to APM, but some, some customers may require the use of LDAP-S, which is LDAP secured over SSL. And using LTM, we can provide that functionality. So I see we've logged on to a version 10.1. This turns out to be an Edge Gateway box, which does include APM, WAN, WAM, but it has some native uh, LTM functionality. And we'll use LTM uh, with server-side SSL to uh, enhance the LDAP capability to provide LDAP-S type authentication. Well, let's get into it. So what would be the first thing an administrator would do? So I wanted to show you if we're looking at a, an LDAP configuration, we will have... Uh, this should be familiar to folks. We'll have an LDAP AAA object that uh, allows us to configure with LDAP. And you'll notice that LDAP uh, S isn't something that we can select when we create one of these AAA objects. In this particular case, to implement LDAP S, I specify an address here which turns out to be a virtual, a virtual server. That particular virtual server is going to implement LDAP S for us. I configure the address for the virtual server. I still pick the LDAP port, which in this case is 389. And then I ensure that I pick server-side SSL. Right, That provides capability from this virtual server to use SSL backend to the LDAP server. Within this virtual server, I'm going to provide a pool. And that pool, the LDAP pool, will contain the actual address of the LDAP server. All right, so if we set this up, we go back one. So within the um, access profile, is that correct? If we step through this, oh, within the AAA servers, what you set up, you set up a AAA server, a, an authentication server. You've pointed that server to a virtual server. That's correct. Onto the LTM or LTM functionality. Yes. And then within that virtual server, you've then created the pool of the actual LDAP ser the authentication servers themselves. That's correct. Okay. So... The actual uh, pool itself has members, which are the LDAP servers that support LDAP-S. Now, okay. it could be, in fact, there could be one or there could be more than one. And, and actually, this is a manner in which you can provide authentication high availability by adding multiple authentication servers to that pool, as members to that pool. If I go look at the pool, I'll see in this particular case, I have one, one particular member, and that member is use that that's enabled here the, this member here is the address of the LDAP server on port 636 the default port for LDAP S and again I could like I mentioned I, you could add more servers here if if you wanted high availability additionally I should probably though I hadn't done it in this case I should probably add a health monitor to ensure that this pool can be can be marked as up or down based on the availability of that particular host the LDAP server in this case. And can you uh, put other authentication controllers, user stores within that same pool? Well, you should not. They should be, remember above at the top in this object hierarchy, you have a AAA server that expects to speak LDAP. So below the AAA server, the virtual server, and then the pool, they should be consistent with that authentication mechanism. So, but you, if, yeah. But if we go a level higher, you then could create either Active Directory or Secure ID or other authentication methods, yes. and then point them to to virtuals and if and sort of cascade them down. Say if a member is not if some if a user is not part of a particular user store, say the LDAP S, 
Right. You could potentially then go on to, say, Active Directory or some other to then be able to authenticate that person. That's correct. So you would be able to configure that and have uh, that capability expressed in the, the access policy itself. And, I, and I can, I'll show a particular access policy, how you do that in the access policy in a bit here. So now that we have the actual virtual server configured, uh, we just, like I mentioned before, we, we put that right into the uh, AAA object with the address of the virtual server. Now that I have this AAA object using the virtual server address, I can go to the actual access policy and use that AAA object and it will automatically use LDAP. So I have an access, actual access policy called test LDAP, test LDAP S. Let me edit that and bring that up. All right, so we have the LDAP S access policy. So this is our visual policy editor where we are able to build entire policies from end to end. And here I'm taking a login, presenting a login page to the end user and getting a set of credentials. And here's where I'm doing LDAP, LDAP S authentication. So it looks nothing different than a typical LDAP authentication, but in this case it's LDAP S. So nothing special here. And in, and in this case too, you know, a lot of our a lot of our viewers are used to the visual policy editor when it comes to remote access and introduced in FirePass for the pre-logon sequences. And so I see here on the on the logon page, there's a little box in front of it. You could certainly add additional pieces like doing integrity checks and host checks and antivirus and firewall checks before you offer this logon page for this individual user. Correct. That is correct. I could come in here and I could add any number of pre-logon page inspections that determine whether the, whether or not the client is, should be authorized to to authenticate to the device, right. whether or not it has, you know... Meets the certain criteria for the internal security policy. That's right. In addition to that, I might also do authentication queries to determine the membership and decide at this point where to branch and what type of authentication to actually do. As you asked before, right, I might not want to do LDAPS, but I might want to do Active Directory if they're in a certain group, and I could do that here. So I could do an, an authentication query and then branch to a different authentication method. So this is really driving the user's identity right into the network and making sure that the big IP edge device access policy manager understands who the user is in context, authenticates them, and then distributes them to their appropriate resources. That's correct. So can we see how this works? Or is there, any, is there anything more that um, needs to be done for the configuration? What are these message boxes? In configuring this and testing it, it helps to put a message box just to indicate, for example, what has occurred without actually performing an action. So just a message box is a nice way of looking at the access policy as it, as it runs. And in this case, on the particular branch where it succeeds, I just display the word works. It works. That's hey, right. if you drop down on language, you mind Sorry. clicking back on there again? Sure. Well, that's kind of cool. What other what other options does the administrator have? Right at the moment, we have Japanese and two forms of Chinese. Oh, okay. So very customizable. Even if the native isn't available, you can customize within the boxes themselves. That's right. So at this point, I'm going to close the visual policy editor, and I'm going to actually go ahead and test this configuration. So I will run a browser against my virtual server that has the access policy for LDAP S and run that. Let me connect to it. And it asks me for the credentials. What's well, good? It denied you access since you weren't in, in the... Since I it, it, didn't type it correctly, <laughs> we would hope that it wouldn't just let me in. Right. And that has been that, proven by my mistake. <laughs> we there we go. Shows. And it printed, uh, as, as we saw, the works. Nice. Message box. And there we are. So being able to natively, we support LDAP. There may be many instances where customers require LDAP S right. for authentication. And here's a way that you can set it up right here on the big IP LTM and the access policy manager. Right. The important thing is even where we don't have a native capability with an APM, we can use the facilities of LTM to help us implement that. Very cool. So thanks for joining us today, Joel. That was actually quite interesting. I'm sure our viewers enjoyed it. And thanks for you for watching. This is F5 On Demand, the technology demonstration series. And so for Joel, I'm Peter Silva, 
signing off for F5 Networks, and visit us at www.f5.com.